Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. Hi, hello -y. my name is Loey and today we are heading back to the haunted side of TikTok for 32, yes, 32 paranormal TikToks that I have put together for all of you. It has been kind of a crazy past couple of months in the world of the scary side of TikTok. I truly feel like we have been fed with some of the best horror content that we have gotten in years on TikTok since 2024 began. And specifically, I found such an increase in paranormal content. If you ever want to participate in these videos, you can tag me over at LoeyBugXO on TikTok in your your favorite scary finds. If you miss me between YouTube videos, you can always go get your bite-sized horror fix over there. Without any further ado, get yourself your drink and your snack. I have a shaker cup full of like juicy juice and let's watch these scary TikToks together. First off, we're going to be taking a look at a creator that I haven't talked about in a really long time and that is the TikToker Soul Mori. And some of you have probably been around since I made one of my first ever scary side of TikToks. TikTok videos on Soul Mori's haunted dolls. In this TikTok captioned unsettling and creepy things my haunted dolls have told me, you can get a feel for the kind of entities that are around Soul Mori. This video has copyrighted music, but some of the things that have been said by these haunted dolls include I miss being alive but not the life I had by Gilbert, as well as I never walked this earth as a human from the dark entity which is a raggedy Ann in a box. There's so many terrifying things that Soul Mori has heard from her dolls. Scary messages that would unnerve you and me so, so, so deeply, but this girl is just built different, okay? She has quite the collection of haunted dolls, as you can see, and she's always getting in new ones. Recently, she posted about one haunted doll in particular with this video, again to a copyrighted song, captioned, buys a haunted doll, noticed it smells like something decaying. Decided to open the back since there are stitches, and this is where it gets really, really, really weird. Something was inside. Finds a tube of teeth and then the video ends. So obviously I couldn't just leave it there. I had to know where this haunted doll came from, how she came to be in Soul Mori's possession. And so I dug a little bit deeper. And the story of this haunted doll, I have to say, is more disturbing than pretty much anything that Soul Mori has ever posted on her account outside of the Raggedy Ann doll that you saw in the first TikTok. Now, there was a whole series of videos on that doll that I didn't even touch because they felt so, like that doll just feels so dark. This one though is a close runner up. So I tracked it all the way back to the next TikTok being the Haunted Doll Unboxing Scared Edition from Soul Mori in which she first got this doll in the mail. Let's unbox my new haunted doll. I collect haunted dolls and this is my latest edition. The first thing I noticed when I opened up the box was a terrible smell. It's like a sickly sweet, rotten smell. Another thing I noticed was a real heavy energy and it wasn't like sadness, it was more like rage. This doll was listed as a very unpredictable spirit but when I saw a photo of her I was drawn in by her presence. I was kind of confused because she had no clothes on even though in the photo she had a dress. She also comes with a bell and this bundle of sage. I tried to ask the seller why but they have since deleted their account so I'm kind of unsure what to make of that. I was hoping for a backstory but there was nothing else in the box. Also she moves in this clip which really freaked me out. She also has this red X on her chest. I can't help thinking that the seller wanted to get rid of this fast and run away. So I am definitely going to cleanse this doll extra carefully before I add her to the rest of my collection. I'm really unsure what to expect from this spirit. I decided to place her with the other dolls that have chaotic spirits. Maybe she can make some connections, or at least be humbled by the other spirits there. I'll keep you updated, but I feel really uneasy about this. 
This poster is not new to buying haunted dolls on the internet, okay? She knows the ropes. I'm also a bit of a haunted doll connoisseur, okay? One day, you guys will meet my collection, I swear. I got nothing on Soul Mori's lineup, but still, okay, I have a couple of haunted dolls. I know how they come in. This one is not normal. And in a follow-up video, Soul Mori explains just how abnormal this entire experience has been. Update on my new haunted doll. So, if you watched my previous video, you watched me unbox this new haunted doll. She arrived differently than pictured. She has no clothes and a red X on her chest. The first night was okay, although I did hear the ringing of her little bell. A lot of you commented that there might be something hidden inside of the doll, and on the back there are some hand stitches that look big enough to put something inside. I'm thinking about cutting open the doll to see if there's anything inside, since paranormal activity is happening. Also, without being disrespectful, this doll really has a bad smell. Like a sickly sweet rotting smell. I just hope there isn't anything weird inside. I also got a lot of comments saying to make her a dress. So, I found an old doll's dress that I'm going to alter for her. Hopefully that will make her happy. Also, I will not be using the white sage that came with her, as burning white sage is a close practice for indigenous people. So yeah, what should I do? Should I open the doll? The doll came unclothed with this weird X on her chest, a terrible smell, and I'm not sure if it's in this video or in a different one that she mentions this, but shortly after she purchased this doll, the seller that she got it from deactivated their entire account. So she couldn't even reach out to them to be like, hey, what in the world is this? To fulfill her own curiosity and also hopefully get to the bottom of this sickly sweet smell, Soul Mori decides to go ahead and snip along the seams of the doll to cut into her and see what's inside. And I'm sure she was not ready for what she found. The doll has some hand stitching on the back and you can see there's this brown liquid that is coming out of it. So I just cut along the stitches and opened the doll up. I firstly found a little bit of paper and I was feeling around in the doll and down her leg I felt something. So I pushed it up and it popped out of the back. This is definitely what is causing the smell because this smelled so bad and whatever is in here was leaking. So this was just leaking into all of the doll's insides and making it smell horrible. At the time of recording that, she wasn't even sure she could post what she had found on TikTok. She wasn't even sure she could post the teeth. But in the next part she does, and we get a closer look at the vial, as well as her own theories as to what it could be. Wrapped up in a piece of cloth, I found some sort of vial. Straight away, I could tell that this was some sort of witchcraft or a spell, or a hex, or something along those lines. There was nothing else inside of the doll apart from a piece of paper, but I can't really read what's on it. This tube is sealed off of wax, so it's not totally secure, and that's why it's leaking. You can see that on my gloves. So yeah, I found teeth inside of a haunted doll. And I don't know what this means, but I'm going to try to figure it out. Soul Mori makes one more video on this doll to talk about even more explanations as to what it could be. Even though it might seem like it could have been a hex, there are positive explanations as to what the doll could be, including the theory that she is a poppet. A poppet doll is seen as a spirit bridge and can be used to curse or aid someone through magic. Call me crazy, but this is just how I'm feeling at the moment. I don't think it's a hex, and I feel no urgency to dispose of it. I'm going to make this doll a dress as an offering, and try to find a box for her. I'm going to give this doll a deep clean, so let me know if you'd like to see that process. 
and feel free to add any more information in the comments. What a freaking roller coaster. I cannot even imagine being Soul Mori right now and realizing you purchased something like this. There is no way that you can actually sell something with like human teeth and stuff in it, like for real on the internet without disclosing something like that. The fact that the seller just sent it and then dipped offline tells me that they knew exactly what they were selling and what they were doing when they sold it. For now, that's where I leave you with a Soul Mori account. It's so wonderful to see this poster back to making her videos again. She's one of my favorite spooky TikTokers that there is, and it is just so nice to be able to open one of these videos with some of her TikToks in tow. Please go check out Soul Mori's account. I really, really, really enjoy her content. And if you like spooky dolls as much as I do, I'm sure that you will as well. Moving on here, I really can't explain why, but there has been such an influx of mimic content on TikTok. The whole thing kicks off when this TikToker named Melody Rose starts to make a seemingly normal TikTok at home one night, saying, okay, first of all, and she starts going into some kind of rant, when she hears something say her name, clear as day. And the kicker is, she's home alone. Okay, first of all, why didn't anyone tell me well. that if you have sh Yeah? If you listen really closely throughout this TikTok, you can also hear as she's just sitting there, something say, Melody, like that, like her full actual name. Melody. <sighs> Maybe it was my cat and she sounds like a human sometimes. That was you, right? Right? Once it's light outside, Melody makes a follow-up to this video, explaining a little bit more, talking about where her head's at, um, but also saying that at the end of the day, she doesn't know what that was. Okay, but first of all, this is the exact same spot I was standing in last night. Um, I feel like it's really quiet. I wanted to see if like I could hear the ringing because I do hear the ringing back in the other one. I don't hear it now, but I had to play it back and see if I hear it. Um, what else? I want to shower and do everything I have to do before it gets dark out. Um, but once it is dark out, I'm going to come right here with that same light and see if that was creating the ringing or see if I can make sense of anything else. Now, as far as Melody's account, when I last looked at it, there were no real major updates to this. And many people believe that this is entirely a hoax, that it was edited in by her. Um, like, it, it sounds a lot like her voice, but this is what mimics do. They mimic a voice that's familiar to you, whether it's yours, a loved one's, or something else entirely. Not to say this is a totally real, like, paranormal thing, I'm just saying, this is what mimics are. But it doesn't stop with Melody. I saw another TikTok that popped up from the account Branson.2020, captioned, hubby isn't home, but I can hear him calling me. First time I hear babe, help, and then the second time I hear my name, then help, then sounds like footsteps. And you just have to hear this for yourself. Making some chorizo for the hubby. Gotta make some extra this morning. Said he's gonna bring over his friend. Babe, are you home? What the heck? The door's still locked. The door's not even open. Okay, anyways, I don't know what that was. I'm hearing things going crazy. Almost done chopping up these potatoes. Is somebody playing a prank on me? Did you hear that? Babe, are you home? You can hear a man, a man's voice say, babe. You can literally hear a man talking. She seems so earnestly freaked out by this. I really think she had just set up her camera to like vlog her cooking and then heard 
her husband's voice out of nowhere? Like, that had to be terrifying. Here's another one from a completely separate poster. This one is from Me Mukbangs. Her mukbang mukbang account is really, really good, too. I watched a bunch of them while I was eating my dinner the other night. But in this one, she just sets up for a normal mukbang when she hears her child yell out for her, but her kid says they weren't saying anything. What's up, y'all? It's Taco Tuesday, and I made tacos. What? Ring. What? Why you call me? You didn't just call me? You playing or you, did you call me or not? It's not loss on me that these videos tend to go really, really viral because people are absolutely terrified of a concept such as a mimic. I know it because in videos that I have made on TikTok talking about these videos, talking about mimics, they have also gone viral and people have talked about having similar experiences. Hearing someone call out their name when they know they're the only person home alone or hearing their own name call out to them in the middle of the night and just choosing to ignore it. I was shocked by how common mimic experiences are and then I stumbled across one more experience. Now we're gonna have a couple of videos from this person named Dustin Lee Frazier. And Dustin's mimic experience comes straight from the Appalachian Mountains themselves. Side note, I'm sick of y'all telling me that I don't pronounce Appalachia right. Do you know where I'm from? Cause I know y'all hear me slip into the accent sometimes. I know how to say the word Appalachia. A lot of people think you're supposed to say it Appalachian Mountains, Appalachia. You can say it multiple ways, but the way that I say it is the way that people from the South say it. Don't try to school me, I'm a Georgia girl at heart. Back to Dustin though. This entire thing kicks off with one video that went super viral captioned, sometimes I hate living in the Appalachian Mountains, especially at night. In this video, you can hear dogs barking like right outside of Dustin's home, despite the fact that he says that he does not have dogs. And initially I thought this could be explained as like wild dogs or like their neighbor's dogs or something like that. However, the story doesn't stop here. Shortly after, Dustin responded to a comment that said, baby, if you heard it, no, you didn't. Close those blinds and put some headphones in. And in this video, you not only hear that strange barking, but something much scarier. I was just trying to get me some trail mix and. To me, that sounds a lot like what I've heard of Dustin's voice so far. I don't know if it sounded like his voice to him. In videos following this, I'm not including all of them. You can head on over to Dustin's TikTok if you want to see the full, full story. He hears what sounds like something on the roof, even more weird noises that he can't explain. But things really reach a boiling point when one day it tries to get into his house. And here's another video of whatever this is at the door trying to get his attention. He captions this video, it won't stop. Hmm. 
Later, while he wasn't even home, he heard strange whistling sounds, and I'm gonna let you hear this yourself before I say anything else. Something to note here is that it doesn't ever sound like the whistling sounds get quieter or even louder or anything, they just stay the same volume, and I think this could mean a couple of things. One, they're edited in, of course, the most likely explanation. Number two, if we're staying on the idea that this is totally paranormal, whatever this is, is sticking right beside him and following him as he tries to get away. Or number three, it's coming over a loudspeaker, but I don't know why anybody would be playing that creepy whistling noise over a loudspeaker. This all culminates in one final TikTok that I'm gonna show you from Dustin in which he says that he got cameras. He finally got cameras to set up around the property. A lot of people at this point are like, you need to set up cameras, you know, you don't know what or who this could possibly be for your own safety, you have to get some kind of security. So he listens to them, he puts up cameras, and in this TikTok, he shows what he caught. And of course, at the end of this, the camera has been torn down and damaged. I thought this was pretty creepy from beginning to end, but I think along with most of you, by the point of the security camera, I knew it probably wasn't real. It doesn't make it any less creepy though, like the voice coming through the door is so unsettling. It gives me chills to even think about now. And the security camera footage is good, it just kind of looks like an edited scary movie, you know what I mean? Nonetheless, Dustin, if you're watching this, I really love your account. I loved watching this haunting. If you guys want to see the full story, head on over to Dustin's account. He has an entire playlist called The Mimic with tons more videos I didn't show here, all of which are super, super creepy. But for now, we're going to move away from mimics into actually maybe another mimic. I'll let you guys decide for yourselves. There has just been so much horror that has come out of the Appalachian Mountains recently, and one that I'm sure all of you knew was coming in this video is the story of the Catman. Y'all know about the Catman, right? Y'all all watch She the Disco Witch, aka Jazz, over on TikTok, right? If you don't, let me catch you up to speed. There is a creator by the name of She the Disco Witch who has been chronicling her experiences with a cryptid, a flesh pedestrian, a mimic, some kind of entity at the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains that she calls the Catman. And it all kicked off with this video. I've never been so scared or freaked out in my entire life. Brett, I'm a clairvoyant. I don't see spirits. I ain't never seen nothing like this before. So I go to let my dog out, right? And I kind of live in the woods a little bit. And I've heard all kinds of weird shit, but I've never, I've never seen anything <laughs> weird. But I swear to God, I just saw a cat standing on two feet that was like six feet tall. It was standing like back, kind of like in front of that tree. And there's like a ridge line. There's like a ridge line right there. And like, if you stand on the ridge, you would be about as tall as whatever the f I just saw was. 
I know this because my dog gets caught on his dog run over there and my husband is about 6'1 and like, I, I get it. But this was a cat with reflective eyes, but its face, like have you ever seen something that your brain kind of knew what it was, but it also knew that it wasn't? Creepy Appalachia TikTok, what the f did I just see? Imagine for me, truly just imagine, if you were minding your own business, taking your dog out for a potty, and you see a cat on two legs, a cat head with a man body. Terrifying. And this is not where the story stops. This poster would be tormented by the cat man for weeks. And shortly after this first TikTok, she made a follow-up. Last night I told you guys about the strange cat man I saw in my backyard. If you're new here, I am not joking. I saw a cat man in my backyard. Like a six foot man with a cat head as a face. For background, I do live at the foot of the Appalachian Mountains. And my house is on really creepy land. Last night I went to go let my dog out into the backyard and the, my backyard is the woods. And I looked up and there was a cat man standing there staring at me and I felt the worst I've probably ever felt. My dog refused to go outside and he cried as I shut the door and whimpered like something's not right. You might not trust me, but you should trust that guy right there because he's a good guy. I came back inside, I made a TikTok video about it, but then otherwise ignored it, got back to work until I heard tapping at my back door. My house is messy, but whatever. You can literally just straight see into my house too. Like, you can just see in. Kept trying to ignore it. But like I said, I'm a witch. I have warding up all around my property, all around my house. And one of my wards fell and broke. And then I started hearing whispering. In this follow-up, she says she heard scratching at the back door, tapping, whispering sounds. And then the cat man came back for another night. This time, she, the disco witch, heard him growling and making weird sounds outside. Side note, but girl, your makeup looks so good in this video. Teach me how. Like, is she being stalked by a cryptid flesh pedestrian mimic hybrid? Yes. Does she absolutely slay while telling us about it? Also, yes. But I was sitting on the couch last night, eating my cereal, and watching Vanderpump Rules, and I kept hearing like a weird grumbly growling, but not like a growl, cause a growl I feel like sounds like a dog or like a wolf or something. But there was also a lot of like scratching at the windows and I could hear like walking back there, but I didn't look out the window and I acted like I just couldn't hear it or didn't notice it. Cause that's what all of you guys said to do. Now, as far as what this could be, I don't think it's a flush pedestrian. I don't know anything about were cats. I'm researching a lot of stuff right now to find, kind of figure out what it is. And I don't think it's a wampus cat because this looks more like a house cat, not like a panther. And the wampus cat looks a lot more like a panther. I'm gonna do a lot more research to kind of try to figure out what this is. I'm really confused on what it wants to do with me and I'm confused on why none of my warding seems to be working, but so far he's been here three nights and it's kind of escalating. Uh, so I don't know what's going on. And also my dog will not leave my side. And when he, it, even today, actually during the daytime today, he wouldn't, he kept staring out the back door into the woods. And usually I think it's a squirrel, but he kind of sat there for a really long time, which usually he doesn't do that if it's like a squirrel or something. So there's that too. So I don't know if this is something that's going to be coming here in the daytime as well. So we'll see. Something she said in this video was that it could have been a wampus cat. Now a wampus cat is a cryptid that of course comes from the Appalachian Mountains. But Jazz said that is not what she saw. She saw a bipedal man, a man on two legs with a cat head. After this, the poster decided to start live streaming at night. She was so deeply unsettled. She kept hearing weird sounds she couldn't explain and constantly thought the cat man was lingering around. Maybe live streaming would deter him. However, on stream, it seems as though he showed back up. I thought I heard it, but I don't think so because I haven't heard it again.
I can't hear too much in the audio of the stream. It mostly sounds like static to me because I think it was raining or something like that. But a lot of people in the comments say it sounded like hissing, it sounded like scratching, and various noises like that. Then, like this can't get any worse, and this is kind of gross, but I, this is real, okay? Like the cat man is literally tormenting this poor lady. If you're new here, I am being stalked by something that walks and looks like a man from the neck down, but has a cat's head. This has been going on for about five nights now. And last night I thought I was in the clear and it hadn't come around because I didn't hear any scratching or any of the weird growling noises and I didn't see it. But when I awoke this morning to let my dog out, which my dog has been really weird about going out onto my actual like back patio. I've been having to take him out in the front yard. Um, the back patio smelled heavily of cat urine. So does that mean it's marking my house as its territory? I haven't been like super scared, you know, I've been unsettled, but I'm starting to become a little bit terrified because why is it marking my house? That statement alone convinced me that the cat man is actually just a cat because that is what cats do. They get pissed off and they, they pee on things. But seriously, at this point, it's getting really, really, really concerning for she the disco witch. She has put up blackout curtains in her house. She has stopped like looking outside when she hears anything that could be the cat man. And up until this point, she has been adamant that she did not think the cat man was a flesh pedestrian. A flesh pedestrian aka that word that I don't say because I'm not calling him in. However, at this point she's not sure that she has another explanation and finally she accepts it might just be a cat man flesh pedestrian. The cat man came back and he scared the shit out of my dog so badly that my dog ripped down his own dog run. My husband was taking the dog out, all right? My dog saw something in the woods, scared the shit out of him. Assume it's the cat man because we've lived here for years and nothing has scared the out of my dog so much as the goddamn cat man. And Teddy was so spooked that he freaked the hell out, was barking blah, 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 and raped down his dog run that has been up for two years. Now, I don't think this is a cat man. To be straight up with you, I think this is a goddamn flesh pedestrian at this point. And with the research that I have done. And for all of you asking me if he had paws or hands, I don't know, I didn't see. And for those of you asking me if he had fur or if he was wearing clothes, uh, no, he was not wearing clothes. He looked like he kind of had fur on his chest, but it was mostly like a grayish gross skin that didn't really look right, which also lends to the whole flesh pedestrian thing. I think it was a flesh pedestrian that was in the middle of, um, transforming and, um, I wasn't supposed to see him when I saw him and yeah, I need to move. At the end of the day though, She the Disco Witch has said that she won't really be posting about the Catman anymore due to the feedback that she's been receiving due to the absolutely horrific comments from people just because she went viral. And I hope the Catman doesn't come back, but I completely understand and respect her not saying any more about it. Also, my community is very nice on the internet, so if you guys want to go give her some love, please, 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 please do. I love this girl. She deserves all of your support. She also makes cool horror content outside of the Catman, so you'll have tons to watch. Coming off of She the Disco Witch, I was thinking a little bit about the rules of Appalachia, the rules of what you are and are not supposed to do, and one creator I've really taken a liking to recently is Ali Shy's World. Now, she tells Reddit stories. I think we talked about one of those before. It was that one about Red Gorge River in Kentucky, um, but I also see her just tell a lot of stories about her own life. She's really into the paranormal. I really like her account. And in this video, she was responding to a comment saying, it's a rule to have your doors locked and covered. I need to hear more about this. So she goes more into depth about the rules of living in Appalachia. I was born, raised, and still live in the Appalachian Mountains. If you live here, you know there's no denying that energy shift when night falls. Things can get downright creepy. And there's a list of rules that you should follow to help keep yourself safe when you're out in the Appalachian Mountains. These rules have been passed down over generations. And if you're not familiar with them, they are don't look in the trees, don't whistle, don't go in the woods alone at night. If you hear something, say your name. No, you didn't. Even if it sounds like a familiar voice, 
No, you didn't. If you see something weird, no, you didn't. If something chases you, don't run. If you're out in the woods and all the animals and insects go quiet suddenly, then you should probably turn around and come back where you came from. Calmly, but quickly. And I always have those people in my comments saying, this isn't true, don't believe that girl, but these rules and these warnings aren't new. Unexplainable things happen here. If you live in the mountains or have visited them, chances are you've experienced something unexplainable yourself. I know I've experienced some weird stuff living here. I've heard my name being called by familiar voices when I knew that person was nowhere around. On multiple different occasions, different days, different years, miles apart. And that doesn't even start to scratch the surface on weird things I've experienced while living here my entire life. So much fascinating horror content coming out of the Appalachian Mountains recently. I don't know what is in the air between this and Morgue. Like, I just feel like we have been so well fed in the horror category from that area. For the next two TikToks, I don't necessarily know if these are haunted. I just didn't really know where to put them. And recently I've had a video featuring this, like a YouTube short TikTok go viral. And I wanted to feature it in a longer video and I guess figure out what you guys think. So it's from Brendan Riley 232 Captioned, we discovered a secret door. During renovations, this guy found a secret door. And when he finally got behind it to his shock and dismay, it was completely sealed up. That didn't stop him though, okay? He broke through all of that, he carried on, and he got into the other side of the door. Now, once inside, he would find a chair with a comforter on it, a really new looking comforter at that, um, what looks like a working functioning power box, and a bed with somebody sitting on the edge of it. If you look very closely throughout this video as well, you might be able to see um, by the door what almost looks like somebody peeking around it. Now, this is clearly like a house, okay? I don't know what the specifics of this finding were. I don't know if they're in an apartment. I don't know if they're in a standalone house, a townhouse, something like that. But they have clearly <laughs> broken into somewhere, okay? This is clearly a built out unit. This is not like just a hidden room off of a house like so many people sometimes find while renovating. There wasn't much in the part two. I think they just showed the person at the end of the bed again. But in part three, they go through the entire house and we get like a full-blown tour of it. You can see this is a nice like relatively well-maintained space. It really looks like dustless and clean and um, while like sheets aren't on the bed, like it, it looks like a fresh mattress and all that. It really looks like someone's space, if not a place that people just moved out of. However, at the end of the video, you can once again see what looks like somebody hiding behind the door. Again, I kind of just wanted to talk about this because I'm going a little viral for talking about it on like TikTok and YouTube, but I don't really know if this is paranormal. If anything, this is either someone else's space that he's broken into, uh, whether they are like legal renters or squatters, or it's all a setup. And I'm kind of leaning towards the latter. I feel like if he had just started breaking into this wall and people were like in there and saw him, they wouldn't have reacted by just like peeking around corners or sitting motionless at the edge of a bed. You know what I mean? I think, I think things probably would have turned out a little different, but a super freaky video nonetheless. Then let's talk about 666 Manchester. And ooh buddy, y'all have been on me to talk about 666 Manchester. I have never, I mean never seen paranormal content go viral quite like this account has. We're talking like tens of millions of views. I'm not totally sure where it all starts off. I did try to dig deeper into the account and find out exactly when the paranormal activity began, but it kind of just seems like this poster popped up out of nowhere and started sharing his paranormal experiences. He refers to the entity that haunts his home as Winston, and Winston is a poltergeist-like ghost who does the most insane ghostly things on camera you've ever seen. This video in particular is like his signature move. He's always messing with the blinds. There's been nothing at all today, so that was out. Out the blue. Got ya. Right. What's next, you little sh**? 
Oh, well, that's nice of you. Closing them. Put the TV back on. I'll turn the, the main light off. Break them f blinds and you're gone tonight. Little sh I'll ring the f priest. At the end of this video, the poster talks about how living with Winston is like living with a really obnoxious roommate, one who's really destructive and not respectful of their shared living space. He says he used to get scared, you know, he used to get freaked out by this kind of stuff, but after a while, after it just repeats all the time, kind of loses its zest, you know, it loses the fear factor. And now he's just like, hey, can you relax, please, actually? However, if anything, Winston just seems to feed off of this negative energy from the poster. Because I'm telling you, this is like a top 10 moments compilation that you're seeing right here. Winston is tossing balloons around the room. He's playing with the blinds. He's knocking chairs over. He's playing with the laptop. He is a menace. Now, people love this account because it's some of the most insane paranormal footage on the internet. You know, we've never really seen a haunting quite like this. I use haunting lightly. Unbeknownst to me until a couple of days ago, 666 Manchester has been like very largely debunked. I guess that they have caught him with fishing wire in his videos or um, just faking various things. And this would be fine. People do that kind of stuff all the time. But apparently he has also been like adamantly denying it. At the end of the day, you guys know I do these videos for fun. I don't take too much of this too seriously. I'm not too hard pressed on who's faking a ghost video and who's not. I just like to get scared with you guys. But I did kind of want to acknowledge it. I got a lot of comments about it, again, when I posted about this on TikTok already. I'm always the girl who, if I believe something has been faked or is fictional in some way, that I'm ready to find like a deeper story or something behind it. You know I'm the first to believe there's an alternate reality game, there's some kind of storyline going on. That's not what this account seems like. Nonetheless, wanted to talk a little bit more about it. And now on to the other scary TikToks. Oh, this is terrifying. This is from Arisa Kelly. This poster was training one night with her crossbow when she heard footsteps. And that was weird to her because like when she trains with this crossbow, it has to be in a very, very like secluded place. It has to be in a place where she can lock the doors, where she knows no one else is there just for safety. But it sounded like someone else was there. And then it gets even weirder. It was about 11 p.m. at night. I was on my own and I was filming a crossbow video. So I had set all the doors and alarms to let me know if anyone entered because I needed to make sure that no one would accidentally walk in front of the target. But this is when it gets creepy. I'm just trying to get my angle for the video. But then I think I hear footsteps further down the building. Just watch my reaction. It really sounded like there was someone walking through the building. But this is when things get super, super creepy. Just keep an eye on the curtain in the corner. Right, that's one. Is it me or does it look like someone's pulling that back? Yeah. And the crazy thing is I had no idea until I sat down and edited this video in the studio on my own and I freaked out. In the video, you can literally see the curtains move to the side as if somebody has moved them and is just peeking around the corner, but nobody is there. And the poster says she didn't even notice until she edited the video back, which had to be so spooky. She's still certain no one else was in that building and now believes it probably was a paranormal experience. This next video comes from Mark Sebastian F and I can't show you the first part of it due to copyrighted music. The poster was listening to Linger by the Cranberries, immaculate choice. It's captioned, tried to make a dead dad joke, but apparently my dad didn't find it funny. As a fellow member of the Fatherless Club, I found this very funny. The poster is streaming when he gets a comment asking if he knows any dad jokes, to which he just says, it's really messed up you'd ask that. My dad is dead. Like, as a joke. But then, as the video goes on, this is what happens to the music. There's not enough. Alexa, stop. Okay, now wait a minute. 
Now, wait a minute. Tell me that doesn't sound like his dad ripping one from the afterlife. It gets even weirder though. As the clip goes on, you can hear what sounds like something whistling or whispering in the background of the video. Dad, that I was not, that wasn't meant for no disrespect, I was just making a dead dad joke. That was weird. I thought this was so funny, chilling, also kind of sweet, like his dad is clearly always with him and thought he would join in on the jokes, you know? Um, it, it just made me feel a lot of things. I definitely think that was his dad trying to tell his own dad joke though, like for sure. And he got me, I giggled. Then we have a video from Daza is Plot Armor. And I just want you, as this person is speaking, to look at the painting behind her. I'm convinced editing is like a form of gaslighting because I will start a show over a ship edit. I watch the show. They're not even canon. I'm moving. When the eyes just slowly start panning over, it's so freaking scary. Since she's talking about editing in this, I assume this was edited. I assume it's just like a... A, a joke, you know, but if it's not, if the house is just aggressively haunted and the ghost is taking form in this like anime painting, um, I don't know what to tell you, girl. Maybe move out. Maybe move out. I'll fund it myself. I don't know if there is much other choice, but just that is the ghost's house now. Last but certainly not least, let's talk about the face by the moon. And I, I've got a lot to say about this one. Videos of a man's giant face in the sky have been going viral on TikTok for a while now, basically like the last month. And mostly they stem from the account Incognito Gaming TV, who showcases a face by the moon. Now, the first time I watched this, I couldn't see the face and then it finally registered to me and I was like, oh, that is that is a face next to the moon. You can literally see what looks like a big stone face. Everyone in the comments was talking about like, could this be a Titan, like God themselves? Like what, what, is it an angel? Is it like something else? Are we being monitored by something? It's worth noting that this guy was shooting all of these videos in Kentucky as well. There are others, but I'm just gonna show this one because the face is the same in pretty much every single one of them. And it is creepy, don't get me wrong. You can see all these details. You can see the face illuminated by the moon. You can see like veins or cracks in the skin. You can see the nose, you can see a mouth. However, this person seems like a very skilled editor. They have made other videos about phenomenons caught in the sky before, all of which look like incredible and convincing editing, but editing, you know? It doesn't make it any less creepy. It's the wildest effect I've ever seen in my entire freaking life. People in the comments have been terrified by the man next to the moon. And it is a horror concept for the ages. I really hope somebody buys this idea from him and turns it into some kind of like insane movie or video game or something so I can explore it further because like, wow, it is so scary. But with the man next to the moon, that is 32 scary TikToks from the haunted side of TikTok that I wanted to share with all of you. What did you guys think of this one? Which scary video was your favorite? Which one seemed the creepiest to you? I want to know. Let me know in the comments down below. I'm really keen to Soul Mori's story. I also love the story of the Catman. I'm not gonna lie. I am completely hooked on Catman video lore, but I'm curious what you guys enjoyed. So let me know down below and don't forget to give me a follow over at LoeyBugXO to tag me in your favorite scary videos as well as get your daily fix of bite-sized horror content from yours truly. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. A special thank you to my subscribers who are members of the channel. If you want to join the channel memberships and get extra members exclusive perks, including members only videos, as well as my members only podcasts that I have started for my love bug tier, you can click that little join button somewhere around the screen. We would love to have you. An extra special thank you to my VIP loves for their continued and generous support of the channel. I love and appreciate you all very, very much. I love you all very much and I will see you in my next video. Bye!